question was, what exercises can we do for back pain? Um, will I go? Yeah, you go. You take it off. <laughs> uh, back pain is a huge topic and we really like this question because exercises for back pain is exactly what we should be talking about when it comes to back pain. Uh, for, just for argument's sake here, we're going to pin this down a bit. We're going to assume that this is just your general back pain. So no sort of sciatic or neural involvement. Not that exercises are key for that as well, but just to guide people a little bit here. So most patients that present with back pain have got pain across the bottom of their back. It can be more to one side than the other. Um, and a lot of these patients, it's, it's, first of all, it's very common, isn't it? Like, What brings it on most commonly, would you say? Um, I think it depends on what age group, but it's usually after they've maybe um, done something they haven't done for a while or lifted something a bit too heavy. Sometimes it can just come on gradually for no reason. Maybe Posture they've been, related. Yep, desk work related. They've done something at work. They've driven for too long in the car, a long journey. Something like that will trigger off the, the episode of back pain. Most people are definitely a bit apprehensive when they get back pain first because the pain can be so severe. Uh, but we know when it comes to backs, the pain doesn't always equal tissue damage. So that initial anxiety and fear of having sharp pain is really common. But back pain is very common. Um, literally, 85-90% of us will have an episode of back pain at some point in our lives. And most, in most cases, this calms down relatively quickly. For those that it, it, that it doesn't, we now know that exercise is becoming a huge part of how we manage it. So this particular question is asking what type of exercise can they do? Well, the good answer to that is that any type of exercise. Yep. That's the short answer. Um, we don't, you know, people come in and think, oh yeah, Pilates is good for back pain or yoga, yoga or walking. But we now know all of the national guidelines of research on this says it doesn't matter what you do as long as you're doing something. So we'll work with our patients. You say it doesn't matter. I mean, vigorous exercise is obviously going to flare up the back pain and make it worse. So obviously, it's in moderation. Same yeah. with all your back pain. Don't push into your pain with the exercise. Oh, absolutely. And like, if patients come into us in acute, in acute pain, then obviously we're going to guide them to what they can do. And for those patients, people that have acute flare-ups of their back pain, we'll, we'll be very restricted as to what they can do. But we'll find some movement or some exercise that's comfortable, and we'll run with that. And then as they recover... That's where it comes into finding what exercise you enjoy because we know that if you continue to exercise long term, then you significantly reduce the risk of your back pain coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's where the motto of, do you know, find something you enjoy and do it comes into it. So I like, I know I was working with a lady recently and she was asking me about Pilates, but she had no interest in Pilates. She had no interest in coming into a class mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, you know, I heard it's good for my back. And I was like, in my own head, straight away, I was like, this woman is not coming into Pilates because I need her to find some activity that she enjoys in order to maintain her exercise long term. So we broke it down and we, we were like, well, what do you want to do? What would you enjoy doing? What's sustainable? What will work in your daily routine? And then it really doesn't matter if it's a walking program that we start, if it's a cycling program, if it's swimming, um, you know, if it's jiving, it doesn't matter as long as you're doing something. But what you said is right, like I would never just say to my patients, right, off you go on a 30 minute walk and that's your exercise for your back pain. You have to modify things at the start to what you can tolerate. Yeah? Yeah, well, do you, if someone comes in and back pain, you're not going to send them back out driving straight no. away. No. You're going to build them up into doing a few simple stretches and exercises. Absolutely. And grade them up and get them back driving and then they want to stay driving and that's their way of managing their pain or managing their back going, going forward. Yeah, um, and I guess then the next question often is how much, how often? Mm -hmm. And again, this probably dictates on what kind of, where they are in their journey. So somebody who comes in with a current episode of acute back pain where their pain is high will probably have them doing a few exercises, little and often. Um, and then once they're sort of recover from their back pain, then the guidelines really are at least 150 minutes a week. So, you know, 30 minutes of something most days of the week. And that's not only the guidance for back pain, that's the guidance in general. That's the minimum of what we should be doing. Um, so we definitely try and get them to do something that they enjoy so that you can maintain that long term. Um, I think the biggest thing with back pain when it presents first and exercise is that patients are really, they're afraid, like they come in 
and you can even see when they get off the chair how apprehensive they are about moving um, and I think the biggest part of our job in those initial days is to really reassure and bring down that fear of exercise, fear of movement. Because the old thoughts were, you know, you rested for back then. Yeah, a few weeks in bed, lie down in bed and everything stiffens up. All the muscles start to weaken and it actually uh, makes it a lot harder to, to recover from, um, from your back then. Yeah. Um, but we would typically see people getting up and, up and down out of chairs. I don't know if you can see me, but they're literally guarding their back so they're really tensing all their back muscles and then they're literally standing up like that to really guard it but what you need to try and do is try and kind of breathe through it and try and bend and get everything moving to try and just get those muscles starting to free up and, and get them moving and like in that example for that patient that's come in and that amount of pain we might start them with really simple leaning forward and back movements sliding their leg up and down getting them to think about reaching for their toes really simple movements to begin with to get the back used to it um, and to, to sort of expose the back to the movements that the patient has actually been avoiding um, and with avoidance is spasm you know you're holding tension through yourself and that can it actually make your symptoms yeah. worse yeah that gives you pain um so i think we're probably we're trying to cover a lot with this answer but in the early days of acute back pain if you are noticing that you're avoiding movement then please get to your health care care professional for advice because they'll be able to guide you on those initial exercises that may be pain-free and comfortable for you to do if you're somebody out there who's had you know recurrent episodes of back pain over the years you're feeling pretty good then we would massively encourage you to go and find something you enjoy doing and do it for 30 minutes most days of the week and that alone will significantly reduce your chances of back pain i know like we when we discharge our back pain patients so say they've come to us they've had their acute back pain we've given them graded exercise and then we've got them to the point of you know they're pain free they're back at work they're doing what they want to do and i always leave them and my patients out there that are listening will know this i leave them with their sort of forever exercises and they say to me i have to do this forever and i'll say yeah you know do this 30 minutes most days of the week and you won't be back into me and it's amazing how little uh, once the pain is gone they just drop the exercises and then a year later two years later patients are coming back and saying oh it's back again oh did you keep up your exercises no um so if people can and then the opposite to that when when patients maybe have really enjoyed the Pilates stuff we've given them and in, come into class or they've gone off and joined the running club or done something then we rarely see them again in clinic unless something sort of significant has happened so I think in terms of what exercises are good for back pain it's find something you enjoy doing and keep doing it.